The Sunday School lesson for October 22nd, 2023 is The Superiority of the Gospel. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. Welcome viewers and subscribers to my channel. If you are new here, notice the agenda. I will share the backstory, read the lesson text, and offer a brief lesson summary. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. The book of Galatians was written during Paul's first missionary journey. Notice the map. Unlike many of his letters, Paul did not address the book of Galatians to the church in a particular city. Galatia was a Roman province in the central highlands area of modern-day Turkey. Paul and Barnabas had evangelized this area on the first missionary journey, including the cities of Pisidian Antioch, Iconian, Lystra, and Derbe. These cities were the recipients of the book, which was intended to be circulated among them and read to all the churches, according to Galatians chapter 1, verse 2. The Purpose of the Letter Paul's purpose in writing this epistle was to counter false teachers determined to sabotage the doctrine of justification by faith. False teachers spread the deceptive teaching that Gentiles must convert to Judaism and submit to the Mosaic law before becoming Christians. What law meant to Jews? We must keep in mind that the Jews in Paul's time had a very different understanding of the word law than we do. We tend to think of law as including civil rules and regulations, prescriptions that govern our conduct. While there was an element of that within the Old Testament laws, that system was primarily meant to maintain a right relationship with God. To the Jews, these laws consisted of not only regulations concerning relationships, but also ceremonial regulations covering such matters as worship and diet. Moral and ethical living was only a part of what the Jews thought of when they used the word law. Verse 1, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. Verse 2, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Verse 3, are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Verse 4, have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in vain? Verse 5, so again I ask, does God give you his Spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? Verse 6, so also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Verse 7, understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Verse 8, scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. Verse 9, so those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Verse 10, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, as it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Verse 11, 
Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. Verse 12, the law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Verse 14, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Verse 15, brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in uh, this case. Verse 16, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. Verse 17, what I mean is this, the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. Verse 18, for if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise, but God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. A brief summary. Paul hit his readers with a series of six rhetorical questions that hammered in one key point. The Holy Spirit, not their personal virtue, was their source of power. This disregard for Paul's teachings led them to abandon that truth. After the barrage of questions, Paul illustrated his point with the example of Abraham. Abraham's relationship with God was not motivated by wanting to earn a reward, but by confidence in God's power. The true children of Abraham are not physical descendants, but those who imitate his faith. Galatians chapter 3 delivers a powerful message about the preeminence of faith in our relationship with God. This faith is not confined to a select few. It transcends ethnic, social, and gender divisions, uniting us all in Christ. It emphasizes that we are saved not through our efforts, but by faith in Jesus Christ. It is a chapter of liberation, pointing to the freedom we find in Christ. Paul begins by calling the Galatians foolish for believing they could achieve perfection through human effort after beginning with the Spirit. He reminds them of Jesus Christ's crucifixion and questions whether they receive the Spirit by works of the law or hearing with faith. He uses Abraham's faith, which was credited to him as righteousness, as an example. Paul asserts that those with faith are the true children of Abraham, and the scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. The law, however, does not nullify the promise, but was added because of transgression until the seed, which is Christ, to whom the promise referred had come. The law was a guardian leading us to Christ. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Join me soon for the next audio reading of the Sunday School lesson and an audio reading of the lesson summary.